Good morning or afternoon. I can't even remember what time it is. It's just afternoon. So it's Roland Penny's East Marsh Acres, and uh, we're just bringing you up to date as to what exactly we're doing on this uh, bright, sunny, with a few clouds, uh, Saturday afternoon. And uh, uh, just to show you um, how far the gardens have come from last week. So here you can see the flowers have started establishing themselves in this outside row. We're not seeing anything of the carrots in the next row. The uh, kale and other uh, cabbages have started to again establish themselves really little uh, but they're they're starting to come along if you take a look at this as an example um, it's starting to establish itself even this one is not too bad um, and there are better ones as we go along some of them are starting to stand up on their own this one this one and in the outside row there are a couple of things that are going on so these are potatoes from last year and so we're pulling them out as we come along. That's not what we want here. These are going to be onions. Uh, at least that's what's planted. And we can't see, see here you can see a little bit of the potato root that comes out with the actual plant itself when you pull it out. Potatoes are in the same family as tomatoes, part of the nightshade family. And as a consequence, the uh, greenery, the plant vegetative matter, to be a little biologist uh, in my background, is uh, poisonous. So we cannot give it to the uh, uh, chickens and the only thing we can do with it is put it into the compost where it will degrade, etc. So here you can see the uh, garlic and they are starting to get into scapes the flowering head. There's another one there. See the bulge just above my fingers. And there may be a few more. We'll let them progress a little bit and then pull them out and use scapes as a nice uh, augmented dinner or a, an augmentation to, to dinner, etc. Oh, here's another scape that's starting, and here's one. Um, oh, and here's, here's a few in this bunch as well. And there's a scape by itself, and the rest of this is red onion. Um, so there's a couple of volunteer scapes from a year ago and a few more here as well. But I don't see any evidence of the onions that we planted, nor can I see evidence of the onions that we planted in here. They're taking a sweet old time. And this is the Asiatic something choy. It wasn't bok choy, but it was another type. Anyways, um, we've also set up a shelter. So we have some place to go when it's sunny, get out of the sun. Um, we found that it's exactly the same structure as uh, our old dining tent. The old dining tent, if you remember, if you can go back into previous versions of the uh, uh, the vlog, and you can see uh, the canvas dining tent that we had over there, actually, in that uh, open area uh, to the end edge of this particular space. And uh, it's got the same kind of structure, but it doesn't have any of the mass that the canvas did and as a consequence it uh, is rather I don't know cheap is the only word that comes to mind uh, at this point uh, Trish is just raking up some of the area around uh, to get rid of some of the uh, chicken poop that we had here before we've moved the chickens again uh, so they were here before and they've got, done a good job of leveling off that space and now they're into new grass and they're they, they were moved yesterday so they've been already working 
on uh, taking care of the, the, the ground that's around. You can see that they're starting to work it down. And we'll probably be moving them down in this direction in the following weeks. So every week and a half or so that we're moving them on. And uh, we'll start moving around the property so that they can start uh, reconditioning the soil, but also um, making use of the uh, the grass, etc., uh, as a food uh, material. Anyways, going to back to the garden. So here you can see that the beans have not only sprouted, but they are moving past the seed leaves. So again, a little bit of biology. Um, I've got a background in biology and ecology. Um, anyways, here are the seed leaves at the bottom. Those are called the cotyledons. They're the first leaves that come out and they actually have the shell of the seed uh, with them as well. So here's the cotyledon as well. And now they've got true leaves that are starting to grow up. These particular uh, beans have a purple color to them. And the, in fact, the beans themselves will be purple uh, when you uh, pull them off the plant, harvest them. Um, but you will also find that they turn, once you blanch them, uh, put them in water, uh, boil, boiling water, that they turn green. Uh, so the underlying color is, is a dark, dark green. They've got a very nice flavor to them. And then I think we're into green beans here. So again, they're pole beans. Uh, they're starting to grow quite nicely. And then we're into yellow beans, I think, down here. And right on the end, and you're starting to see some of these. So this is, you can tell that the leaves are a different shape and they grow in a different pattern than the beans do. So these are peas. And you see some of the, the little tendrils that will start climbing around the fence and drawing the, the uh, pea plant up um, as it grows. There's lots of weeds, of course. And we've had a little bit of rain over the last day. So uh, they're fairly easy to pull. We should pull a hole through that. In this row, you can start to see that the potatoes, so these look exactly like the potatoes that uh, I was pulling out over there, but this is where we want to have potatoes. So in other words, these are not weeds, whereas the potatoes that are growing where we don't want them are weeds. And the, the definition of weeds that I'm using here is a plant that is growing someplace where you don't want it to grow. So in other words, any type of plant could actually be a weed if it's in a place where you don't want it to grow. Anyways, so this is potatoes in this row. And in the next row, you can see that we have bunches of plants starting to grow in addition to the weeds, the ones that we don't want there to them to grow there. There's one leaf. Um, these are uh, watermelons, I think, in this particular row. So they're starting to grow up. And here we have rhubarb. And I think those are little rhubarbs there. They're red ones. They're starting to see some light. And there's one and one over here as well. And over here, again, we've got bunches. So these are uh, squash of some kind in this row. We've got quite a number of squash that are starting to grow up nicely. And then in this last row, again, there are different types of squash, etc. And I can't remember what these are, but they're in the cucumber family. They look like cucumbers. So life is definitely coming with all of these plants and of course all of the weeds. Oh, that was a spinach plant. A lot of lamb's quarter in here. Some kind of weed. Got lots of lamb quarter around here. This is a bean, but it's growing where we don't want it. Pull it out. I don't know what this is. I don't, definitely don't want it there. 
and here you can see the strawberries and the uh, asparagus that we planted. And the asparagus are all along here, interspersed between the strawberries. All right, so today what we're going to do is spend some time in the hothouse. So I'll bring you out there, introduce the work that we're doing, and then put you on time lapse with the other camera. So as you can see, the grass and other kinds of uh, bushes, etc., that we have. This is some kind of thorn, and it grows everywhere here. Uh, it's just actually absolutely a, a horrendous plant because it uh, gives quite large thorns. Uh, they're small at this point in time, but they can do some pretty good damage to your arms, hands, feet, etc. All right, so we're going to be working in here for the most part today, tying up particularly the cucumbers, which are starting to grow quite prolifically. But then if we have time, we'll get to the strawberries as well, tying them all up to the uh, horizontal rafters that are in here um, so that they've got some place to go up. All right, so that's the kind of work that you will see, and we'll keep you updated as to what we're doing by putting you on the time lapse. We'll talk to you soon.
So we're finishing up um, tying up the cucumbers. We're on our last couple. And uh, as you can see all the way back, they're all tied up. Cut the string here. Okay. And the reason that we're tying them up is that they can grow up the string and stay off the ground. So that um, there's several reasons for that. A couple, anyways, that it uh, has more airflow for the cucumbers, and that also then prevents a lot of um, uh, Disease diseases that. like mold and. And then also um, your slugs and so on that like to get at the tomatoes or uh, cucumbers and so on. So it keeps them off the ground for the slugs and good air quality. Um, yeah, nice and neat. It's not all over the place as well too. So easier to manage. Easier to manage the uh, the harvest and so on. <clears throat> and then we're going to do the exact same thing for the tomatoes. Except we won't be using these pegs because we don't have enough of them. We will just tie them onto the bottom of the stem and then go up from there. So do you want to show how I'm winding so the plant around? Winding the plant around the string and then it will follow it up so as it you grows. Take a look at this one. Like as you can see like that and then we can also train it so if we see them coming that they're not doing that then we can wind the plant around the string as it goes up you can see we have some some blooms already in these one this is a pretty vigorous one here it is already up to here and uh, so you can see how the string is all up through there but the yellow blossoms are there and I did see oh yeah I did see one that actually had a cucumber starting to grow so I want to find out yet too look up on the internet experienced people more experienced people with cucumbers um, we didn't do it last year and we had a really good crop, but picking up off the first blooms rather than, um, uh, so then what it does is it um, puts its energy into the root system or the, or the stem system going up rather than into the fruit right away. So don't know if that's a common practice. But uh, I'll look it up, and if not, we will, or if it is so, then we will pick out a few of the buds. So we found in here a bean plant that's here, and we've got a few um, peas, it looks like, here. So these are volunteer, and I don't know if they, um, where they came from, probably in the soil. But they can, they can uh, go up the stem as well too, and maybe we can get a few peas as well to uh, eat there. So, anyways, thanks for joining us here on this hot afternoon. As it's hot in the hoop house, anyways, uh, and uh, we will talk to you later. Bye for now.